Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. With the 5600G as cheap as it is right now, this could definitely be an enticing upgrade path for someone who's already on the AM4 platform. As well, it could be enticing for someone to go down this route if you're looking at building a budget gaming computer. And the reason why I'm talking about this one specifically is that this probably has, aside from the 5700G, um, the best integrated graphics that you can get on a CPU that will actually allow you to do some gaming. I would say this is probably equivalent to something like a 1030, uh, which again is not a very powerful dedicated graphics card, but it does have enough power where you can comfortably play things like Overwatch. And I'll post the video I did up here where I ran gaming benchmarks on the integrated graphics of this alone. Now in this video, I'm going to compare the 3600 to the 5600G using my 6700 XT. Uh, the 3600 is probably the most popular, or one of the most popular 3000 series CPUs uh, on the market like, that people have bought. So this could be a cheap upgrade path um, if they want to get into the 5000 series. Now if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel as well as if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll also post my system specs and timestamps uh, down in the descriptions. Now, let's move on to uh, comparing these two different CPUs. So starting off with Cinebench R23, we do see a, a little bit of a boost with the 5600G over the 3600. The single core performance is about 16% higher at 193 points, and the multi core performance is 20% higher at 1,823 points. So let's see how this translates into gaming performance. So, starting off with Assassin's Creed, we can notice there is a little bit of an improvement uh, over the 5600G. We're getting 80 FPS at 1080p versus 74 FPS at average FPS on the 3600, whereas if you're looking at the lows, the lows are pretty consistent across the board. Then when you hit 4K, there is no difference uh, whatsoever. The odd thing I did notice about Assassin's Creed is that the 1080p and 1440p averages on both were the same. So 74 versus 73 for the 3600 and 80 uh, at 1080p and 1440 on the 5600. I don't know why this is. I've swapped these CPUs back and forth and there was really no change. Then moving on to breaking point. Moving on to breaking point. Uh, again, we're seeing at 1080p uh, bump in performance. It went from 104 on the 3600 up to 117 FPS on the 5600G. When you start to get to 1440p and 4K, the difference is fairly negligible or non-existent. And when we look at the lows, the lows are pretty much the same uh, regardless of the CPU. On Cyberpunk 2077, which is a newer game and it's fairly graphically intensive, there's not much difference when looking at 1080p, 1440p, or 4K uh, on either of the uh, CPUs. Where you do see uh, a difference is on the lows. So at 1080p, the 5600 is uh, has a low of 69 versus 55 on the 3600 and at the 1440p on a 5600G, it's sitting at 47 versus 40. So there is a bump uh, on the lows, but when it comes to the average FPS, there's not much difference. With Far Cry 5, uh, this is, game is a few years old. You're seeing a bump in 1080p and 1440p over the, three, the 3600. We got 116 versus 105 and 113 versus 103. So we're seeing about a 10% jump in performance. When you look at the low as well, we're still seeing a jump in performance. You got 89 and 88 versus 80 and 77. So we got a little bit of a performance boost there. On to Horizon 5, more GPU intensive game. There's relatively no difference. The 1080p average and 1% low 
are almost identical to the 3600, same with the 1440p and the 4K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, again, game's a little bit older, and we do see a little bit of an improvement at 1080p, but we're talking less than 10 FPS on 144 uh, 144 versus 134, and at the lows, they're almost identical. And when you move on to the 1440p and the 4K, there's not much difference there. So in the older games that aren't as GPU-intensive as the newer ones like Horizon 5 and Cyberpunk 2077, you do see a little bit of a performance boost uh, over the 3600. However, the boost isn't that great. We're talking less than 10% uh, performance in while gaming. While we did see a little bit of a performance on the 1% lows, the FPS average did not move a whole lot. So I would say it is not a worthwhile upgrade from a 3600 to a 5600G. If you have a, some, a lower CPU than the 3600, uh, 3100 or something like a 1600 or 2600, you'd probably notice a, a, a bigger gain in performance. But again, from any CPU to this CPU, I probably wouldn't recommend where you can get the 5600 at roughly the same price or the 5600 for 5600X for a little bit more. I would recommend going with one of those CPUs. They're going to offer a lot more performance boost because it does have the new architecture like the 5600G. However, it has the additional L3 cache at 32 megabytes versus 16 megabytes, which will make a difference in your gaming performance. That's why the 5800X 3D is such a good gaming CPU with that uh, 3D cache. The additional, I think it almost uh, has almost 100 megabytes cache. It's probably in the 5000 series or compared to Intel's 12th gen, it's the, that's the, the benchmark, that's the Cadillac CPU for gaming. So go with the 5600 or the 5600X. I would not go with the 5600G unless you were building a budget gaming computer where you do not plan on getting a dedicated graphics or you plan on getting a dedicated graphics card down the road and you just want something to get you in, get you into gaming right now uh, so you can set yourself up later on. Anyways, again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks.